Ευλογητός ο Θεός ημών, πάντοτε νυν και αή και εις τους αιώνας των αιώνων. Αμωμή εν οδό αλληλούια, ευλογητός η Κύριε, δίδαξον με τα δικαιώματά σου, Alleluia. My soul is worn with endless longing for your judgments at all times. Alleluia. Incline my heart unto your testimonies and not unto covetousness. Alleluia. Despair took hold on me because of sinners that forsake your Lord. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy. We ask you, hear us, and have mercy. Again, we pray for the repose of the soul of the servant of God, Kharula, who has departed from this life, and for the forgiveness of her every transgression, both voluntary and involuntary. <laughs> that the Lord our God may establish her soul with a righteous rest, the mercies of God, the kingdom of heaven, and the remission of her sins. Let us ask of Christ, our immortal King and God. Let us pray to the Lord. For you are the resurrection, the life, and the repose of your departed servant, Harula, O Christ our God. And to you we offer glory with your eternal Father, and your all-holy, good, and life-creating Spirit, both now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Ehiresu, episan me ke eplasan me, sinetison me ke mathiso me tasendolasu. Eleison me, Kyrie. Oti eien ithin osaskos en pachni, ta dikeomata su ke pelathomin. Eleison me, Kyrie. From your judgments I have not declined, for you have set a, a law for me. Have mercy on me, O Lord. I have inclined my heart to perform your statutes forever in return for your mercies. Have mercy on me, O Lord. Amen. 
Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. To Kiryu they amen. For you are the resurrection, the life, and the repose of your servant Harula, O Christ our God. And to you do we send up glory with your eternal Father and your all holy, good and life-giving Spirit now and ever and to the ages of ages. <laughs> Κατά το κρίμα των αγαπώντων το όνομά σου, αλληλούια. Νεότερος εγώ είμαι και εξουδενωμένος τα δικαιώματα σου και πελαθώ μην, αλληλούια. Rulers have persecuted me without a cause, and because of your words, my heart has been afraid. Alleluia. My soul shall live and shall praise you and your judgments will help me. Alleluia. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. The choir of the saints has found the fountain of life and the door of paradise. May I also find the way through repentance. The sheep that was lost am I. Call me up to you, O Saviour, and save me. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. You who of old did fashion me out of nothing, and with your image divine did honour me. But because of transgression of your commandments, did return me again to the earth where I was taken. Lead me back to be refashioned into that ancient beauty of your likeness. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. Image I am of your unutterable glory, though I bear the scars of my stumblings. Have compassion on me, the work of your hands, O Sovereign Lord, and cleanse me through your loving kindness. And the homeland of my heart's desire, making me a citizen of paradise. <laughs> Τον Αγίον Κύριον 
Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the trinal radiance of one Godhead with reverent song, acclaiming, let us cry, holy are you, O eternal Father and Son, also eternal and Spirit divine. Shine with your light on us, who with faith adore you, and from the fire eternal rescue us. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, O God. With the saints give rest, O Christ, to the soul of your servant, where there is neither pain, nor sorrow, nor suffering, but life everlasting. Where is the pleasure in life, which is unmixed with sorrow? where the glory which on earth has stood firm and unchanged. All things are weaker than shadow, all more elusive than dreams. Comes one fell stroke, and death in turn prevails over all these vanities. Wherefore in the light, O Christ, of your countenance, 
and in the sweetness of your beauty. To her whom you have chosen, grant repose, for you are the friend of humanity. Like a blossom that wastes away, and like a dream that passes and is gone, so is every mortal into dust resolved. But again, when the trumpet sounds its call, as though at a quaking of the earth, all the dead shall rise and go forth to meet you. O Christ, our God, on that day, O Lord, for her whom you have withdrawn from among us, appoint a place in the tentings of your saints. Yea, for the spirit of your servant, O Christ. Vanity are all the works and quests of man, and they have no being after death has come. Our wealth is with us no longer. How can our glory go with us? For when death has come, all these things are vanished clean away. Wherefore, to Christ the immortal King, let us cry. To her that has departed, grant repose. Where a home is prepared, for all those whose hearts you have filled with gladness. I call to mind the prophet who shouted, I am but earth and dust. And once again I looked with attention on the tombs, and I saw the bones therein which your flesh were naked. And I said, which the king, which the soldier, which the wealthy, which the needy, which the righteous, or which the sinner, but to your servant, O Lord, grant that with the righteous she may repose. <laughs> Bring to her rest, life-giving Saviour, our sister, whom you have called from this transient world, for she lifts up her voice to cry, Glory to you. I weep and with tears lament when with understanding I think on death and see how in the graves there sleeps the beauty which once for us was fashioned in the image of God but now is shapeless, ignoble and bear of all the graces. Oh, how strange a thing what is this mystery which concerns us humans? Why were we given up to decay 
and why to death united in wedlock. Truly as it is written, these things will come to pass by the ordinance of God, who to her now gone has given rest. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the death which you endured, O Lord, is become the harbinger of deathlessness. If you had not been laid in your tomb, then would not the gates of paradise have been opened. Wherefore to her now gone from us, give rest, for you are the friend of humanity. Blessed is the way wherein you walk today, for there is prepared for you a place of rest eternally. Ότι 
Sofia, Orthia, Cusament, Tua Iu Evangeliu, Irini Pasi. The reading is from the Holy Gospel according to Saint John. Let us attend. The Lord said to those Jews who came unto him, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. Truly, truly, I say to you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself and has given him authority to execute judgment because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and come forth those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. I can do nothing on my own authority. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy, we ask you, hear us and have mercy. Again, we pray for the repose of the soul of the servant of God, Harula, who has departed from this life, and for the forgiveness of her every transgression, both voluntary and involuntary. That the Lord our God may establish her soul with a righteous rest, the mercies of God, the kingdom of heaven, and the remission of her sins, let us ask of Christ, our immortal King and God. Let us pray to the Lord. O oh, oh God of all spirits and of all flesh, who has trodden down death and overcome Satan, bestowing life on this your world, to the soul of your servant Harula, departed from this life, do you yourself, O Lord, give rest in a place of light, in a place of green pasture, 
in a place of refreshment where pain and sorrow and suffering have ceased. Every sin committed by her in thought, word, or deed, do you as our good and loving God forgive, seeing that there is no person who shall live and not sin. For you alone are without sin. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and your law is truth. Let us pray to the Lord. For you are the resurrection, the life, and the repose of your servant Kharullah, who has departed from this life, O Christ our God. And to you we offer up glory with your eternal Father, and your all holy good and life-giving Spirit, now and ever and to the ages of ages. Doxasi, O Theos, Yelpisimon Doxasi. May Christ, our true God, who rose from the dead, have mercy on us. He who as immortal King has authority over both the dead and the living through the intercessions of his spotless, pure and holy mother, of the holy, glorious and all praiseworthy apostles, of our venerable and God-bearing fathers, of the holy and glorious forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, of his holy and just friend Lazarus, who lay in the grave four days, and of all the saints, established the soul of his servant Harula, departed from us in the tentings of the just. Give her rest in the bosom of Abraham, and number her among the righteous through his goodness and compassion as our merciful God. Eonia sui mnimi axioma caristos, quia imnistos adelfi imon. Eonia sui mnimi axioma caristos, quia imnistos adelfi imon. May your memory be eternal, O sister, who are worthy of blessedness and eternal memory. Eonia. Christ is risen from the dead by death trampling on death and granting life to those in the tombs. Christos anesti ek necron thanato thanaton patisas ketis endis mnimasi zoin charisamenos. We are going to miss Harula from St. Spiridon Church. 
I can just see the spot where she was usually sitting. And she was part of this congregation. She was a part of this parish, even though her family responsibilities took her to other churches of our archdiocese as well. But here she found comfort because as we heard in the gospel reading just a few minutes ago, as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself and has given him authority to execute judgment because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. Harula will be, resur will be resurrected to life because her entire life was a journey with the church. She left the church where she was born, and she brought the church on the ship with her, and she established the church in her heart and in her home and later on in her family, and she never let go of it. This is why this generation was so strong. They had a moral compass based on God's commandments and on the teachings of the church. That's why they were so resilient, and all of us just stand back with awe and admire the immigrant generation. But you know, they have taught us resilience too. We're pretty good as well because we are carrying on the traditions that we have learned from the previous generation. And that takes a lot. It takes life lessons to do that. And this generation did. We have prayed to Christ who defeated death with, with his own resurrection to receive that indestructible and eternal part of Harula's personhood, her spirit, her soul, her psyche, to receive it in the kingdom of heaven and place it in the land of the living. From there, Harula is already praying for her beautiful family that she loves so much and which we admire so much too. She's now praying for you and she's also praying with you and will always be on the lookout for you little signs that God will allow her to give you that mum is not very far away and yaya is listening. Nonetheless, sisters and brothers, Harula or Effie Caligaros was a unique part of God's creation and uh, she certainly has left her footprint on the course of human history. Her family has been kind enough to write a eulogy, which I would now like to share with you, describing some of the footprints that she has left behind. The family writes, Harula Efi Caligaros, Theochari, as she was baptized, Xantiotis, affectionately known as Harula, 
was born on the 27th of September, 1929, in her grandparents' home near Carava in Kithira. Her parents, Theodoros Zandiotis and Stamatula Kapsanas, lived on the water in Agia Pelagia, where Harula learned to swim and reveled in beautiful Kithirian summers with her two sisters. Her father was an energetic, adventurous man who traveled to the USA for work to support his family, while her mother, a sweet and caring homemaker, ran the household. Enjoying typical village community living, her parents' home was always open to friends and extended family for meals and celebrations. Karula recounted memories of the long and difficult walk to Karava Primary School each day over rough tracks and in all weather conditions. She recalled that each year her father would buy the three sisters a new coat and shoes for the winter so that they were warm and well-dressed. At age 13, she went to live with her, with her childless aunt and uncle at Garava for a period of five years. These were hard years for her as she was expected to assist in heavy agricultural farming and household maintenance. She missed her family very much, but found strength in her orthodox faith. She attended Panagia Despina Church at Carava and continued to support the church throughout her life. We thank you for your donation to the church in her memory. At age 20, with hopes and dreams of a better life, she left her parents and her beloved island of Kithira to migrate to Australia. She was one of many never-to-be-repeated generation whom we admire so much. In February 1950, she sailed for one month on the Kirinia ship for Melbourne to join her married sister, Evgenia, who lived in the New South Wales country town of Inverell. Harula's two sisters were Evgenia, who was eight years older and married to Harry Zantis, and Rodopi, who was two years younger and married to Petro Panusis. She loved their children, George, Theo, Annette, and Tina, as though they were her own. The three families would regularly visit one another between Sydney and Armadale, sharing holidays and enjoying many special occasions together. She adored every one of them and spoiled them at every opportunity. Her brother-in-law, Harry, traveled to Melbourne to escort her to Sydney and then on to Inverell. In Inverell, Harula worked and lived above the Australia Cafe with family. Whilst there, Harula was introduced to many eligible Greek men by friends and family, but she was quite determined to make her own choice. In 1951, Peter Emmanuel Caligaros stopped in Inverell with his friend Con Zanus on their way to Warialda to buy a shop. Harula was obliged to move out, move out of her bedroom to accommodate Peter whilst he visited Inverell. Needless to say, Peter bought the cafe in Warialda with his brother Tony and named it Caligaros Brothers Cafe. Peter later sponsored his brothers, Jim, Paul and Nick, to come to Australia and join them in this business. On Sundays, when the cafes were closed, Harula and her sister, Evgenia's family, 
would visit Warialda and be entertained by the Caligaros brothers. They were a very musical family, incorporating Peter's love of singing with playing the violin and lute. Single men and women were allowed the opportunity to dance and mingle. These happy and enjoyable gatherings enabled Peter and Harula to reconnect and catch each other's eye, leading to a short courtship, prompting Peter to propose behind the counter of the cafe in January of 1953. Their wedding in Warialda in June of 1953 was followed by a small, self-catered reception at the local town hall. The newlyweds spent their wedding night in nearby Moree. Why? So their cheeky friend Charlie Zanis did not have the opportunity to play one of his practical newlywed jokes on them. In 1954, they moved to the town of Armadale where they celebrated the birth of their son, Emmanuel Peter, and a little sister, Irene, arrived in 1959. In 1961, after co-owning shops with Peter's brothers, the young couple bought their own shop, a mixed business at 62 Mann Street, East Armadale. This shop was an integral part of their life for 18 years. All the family worked together in this shop, which was open seven days a week, 13 hours a day. Peter was the rock who anchored the family and could always be depended upon. Harula insisted he have some recreational time and would regularly send him hunting and fishing with the children. In the evenings after the shop closed, he would entertain his family by singing and playing his musical instruments while listening to his favorite Greek records. Harula was the entrepreneur who introduced and instigated, instigated strategies such as a giftware counter to entice and satisfy their customers' needs. She had initiative and attended night college to learn English and she obtained her driver's license. She took great pride in and spent every opportunity tending to her flower gardens and vegetable patch. Maintaining the family home and cooking up a storm gave her immense pleasure. She would experiment with new recipes while always having a supply of the traditional Paximavia, Kulurakia, Melomakaruna, and Viples on hand. Her Spanakopita was a renowned specialty. In fact, in later years, her children and grandchildren would nickname her Meals on Wheels. Whenever she visited her family, her car would be filled with home cooking prepared with love. The years spent in Armadale were some of the most joyful in Harula's life. She was very social and loved being part of a Greek community where she made true and sincere friendships that could last for the rest of her life. These families included the Caligaros, Zanus, Kulentianos, Dedus, Saltus, Komano, Pavlu, Sekiris, Anast, Dallas, Tsausis, and Macready families. Not to mention the many Greek families from the surrounding towns, Urala, Tamworth, Manila, Gunnada, Dubbo, and Glen Innes. Even though Armadale did not have a Greek Orthodox church, all religious and traditional occasions were celebrated by the Greek community. Christmas and New Year involved huge picnics at a river or park, name days in family homes, birthdays, engagements, or simply let's just have a party in a local hall. 
These events would come together with family and friends pitching in and sharing the catering with enthusiasm and anticipation. Karula experienced so much happiness from these special occasions and would contribute with great energy. Harula also loved the legendary Monday night poker games. The men would gather to play cards away from earshot of the women. The women would exchange recipes, knitting stitches, jokes, life stories, and of course the highlight, gossip. These regular social Monday evenings were always followed by a trapezi, showcasing the hostess's cooking skills. When Emmanuel and Irene decided to move to Sydney, Harula and Peter followed, finding employment and settling into city life. In 1981, Emmanuel married Therese, having two daughters, Marina and Elena. In 1984, Irene married the late George, having three children, Nicholas, Theone and Peter. Karula showed her unconditional love for each member of her family. She was born to be a mother, mother-in-law and grandmother. Caring for her family was everything. She was dedicated, generous, loyal and intelligent. She lovingly cared for her husband Peter first and foremost until his passing 12 years ago. They will now be reunited. We were all showered with her love and admired her strength of character, her motivation, her tireless work, her effort and kindness. We will always remember her valuable words of advice through our lives. She is very much loved, a true salt of the earth treasure from a never to be repeated generation, she will be in our hearts for eternity. What a beautiful eulogy. She did many things in her life, moved about. That was one generation and a half. And that was your mum and your yaya. You should be very proud of her. And with these words, sisters and brothers, I would like on behalf of the parish of St. Spiridon, on behalf of the Catherian Association of Australia that has today laid a wreath in memory and honour of uh, Harula and, who, and which is represented here by members of the committee. On behalf of all of you who have come from many parts of Sydney and from further away, and on behalf of everyone who is following this service via live streaming, I would like to express to Harula's children and grandchildren, the entire family, both here and in Kithira, our sincere condolences. I also take this opportunity, sisters and brothers, to inform you that following the internment service at uh, Botany Cemetery, section 42, which is towards the Bunurong Road entrance. The family will be receiving further condolences at the Celeste Catering Centre, which is situated there at the cemetery. I'm pleased that many of you are wearing masks because we still need to be careful. Finally, I would ask that you now remain seated where you are as we file past row by row to offer our final respects to Harula and to express our love and sympathy to the family. Sisters and brothers, may the memory of um, Theokhari, Harula, Efi, Caligaros be eternal Amen.
Justice.